Hey everybody! Hi! Hello out there! How's it going? Let's see. Okay. It's Saturday night. Quilt Nerd Live! Um, it's good to be here. I hope you're all well. I hope you're having a good Saturday. So far, it is Saturday, isn't it? Oh yeah, okay, it is. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's chilly today in London. And, uh, I... Well, the last time I had a nap and a Coke Zero, things got kind of crazy, but there's a first time for everything. I also had a nap earlier um, and half of a Coke Zero, so uh, I feel very good about what's going to happen tonight, actually. Um, I'm prepared for like the hyper energy to sort of appear, and then I can pull it back a little bit. We'll see. Um, I had to take a nap because, and by the way, hello, welcome, uh, anybody who's new or in the chat for the first time or watching this on the replay, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to chat a little bit, chat, and then welcome people, and then, I mean, then, 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 you got to stick around. You have to stick around and find out. Um, very good stuff. You, you, you hear this? That's me. Put, I'm, I'm pounding a stack of content. It's huge. You'll see. Uh, I've got a lot of quilt nerd content for you tonight. So, uh, yeah, so I, I told you, I think earlier this week, that it was time to stop messing around, Fonz. And I just needed to get back into the gym. And indeed, I have done so. You know, uh, when COVID numbers were rising, I mentioned this last time, this summer, uh, COVID numbers were rising. And I, you know, we just, we paused our gym membership. It was just too, it was getting really weird it, it here. And, and I don't know, we just did not feel comfortable sweating and, you know, with, with a crowded gym. So, so it was four months, four months ago that I did any, you know, respectable exercise. And I knew I was going to do that. I was waiting for it. Anyway, um, so I, I'm just a slug. But I went yesterday, did a little stuff, and then today I took my first class since being back. We belong to Equinox Gym, and Equinox Gym is amazing. I feel very grateful that I get to go there and die. Uh, but they have these, I mean, their classes are just amazing. And I took a class that usually, usually is not as as just, I mean like bone and muscle shredding uh, as some of the other ones. The, the one I think is the hardest is called Metcon, Metcon 3. So if, <laughs> if that tells you anything, it tells you everything that you need to know about, uh, you know, this gym and their classes, you know, Metcon 3, metabolism, uh, metabolic conditioning or something. Anyway, they're really hard, but usually athletic conditioning, which is the class I took today. Usually it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not easy. It's terrible, but it's less terrible. Well, yeah, that wasn't the case today. My first class back was intense. It was hard. I wanted to die. I was doing burpees and push-ups and things that just... So I was very tired, but then Eric and I, we went out into London. We saw a Murakami installation exhibit, and we rode all around. It was windy. Anyway, the point is, I needed a nap, or I wasn't going to be able to do anything. So I'm napped. I'm popped soda popped and I'm ready to go. I even put on some lipstick. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's say hi to people. Uh, and you know what? I didn't, I didn't do an Instagram thing. I, I didn't, I usually put an Instagram note out there to say that I'm going live and I didn't, I didn't, I forgot. I mean, I could do it now. <sighs> should I do it? Should I probably, I should probably do it. Right. Oh, I hate doing it. I mean, I got it anyway. We'll see. You know what? If it's if it's just an intimate gathering tonight, that's okay. That's okay with me. Um, and I don't even know if people see that stuff. Do they even see the Instagram? <laughs> Are you following? My one way to get people to watch this show is Instagram. And I cross post to Facebook. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how else to tell people that this is happening. Because quilters aren't on Twitch. If you're new to Twitch, yeah, 
so are we. We're completely new to this. There's no like organic, like find me on Twitch because anyone who's watching, well, not everyone who's watching the show, but many people who are watching this show came to the show, came, came to Twitch to watch this show and we're not Twitch people. So, so uh, it's like, hello out there. So I don't know. I have ideas. <laughs> Really well, I know. Anyway, look, I have a str I have a plan. I have a grand plan, but we're not going to talk about right that that right now. We're going to talk to the people in the chat. Hello, my good people. Dee Marie is here. Susan R. Michael is here. Ha! Susan R. Michael says, "Excuse me. <clears throat> I've just oh hey, do you see that? Look at that. Do you see that little thing? Look at that star. I made it work. I made it work." Someone just decided to follow, and I'm so glad, and I didn't see the name because I didn't look quick enough or something, but whoever just followed, thank you, and the little star was for you, and the little sound. That's what should happen every time that someone follows, and it's like a basic Twitch thing, and I just, I just didn't get it to work. I mean, I just, now it works, and now just wait. Now you just wait until someone subscribes. Just wait, because I, I did a thing, I did a thing that should also pop up. So uh, that's really exciting. So Susan R. Michael says that she just confirmed you can listen to Pink Floyd while viewing quilts. Someone else, not that you're implying anything, Susan R. Michael, but, you know, Faith mentioned last time something about drugs and quilts or like the hippie, the hippie 60s flower power kind of influence on quilts. And I was like very intrigued by the topic and also by Faith's bringing it up. I think it's fantastic. And then home, anyway. So now you're saying Pink Floyd and you're viewing quilts and you're talking about Pink Floyd. I'm just saying, we'll have a good conversation. Uh, Padma, good morning. Good morning, excellent. Um, Word and Bird Nerd, love this, love this. Everyone's here. Um, you're, you are in a place where you belong. You are, we are all, we all belong here. That is for sure. Uh, hey, Quilting Nancy, hi peeps. Peeps. Amy 1E, hello. It's good to see you. It's very good to see you. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Fiendor, got that coming in with the music, with the gospel music. Uh, oh, hey, look at that. Alpha Kenny Buddy. Alpha Kenny Buddy, I don't know you. I think you're new, but I'm really glad you followed. I hope you stay and talk about quilts with us. And if you don't know about quilts, listen, learn, and then, I mean, expound, you know? Uh, that's what we do here. We expound. Uh, Bip, hello. Hello, Bip. Myra's here. Yay! Amy, and Amy says, Amy says, I've made it to the live once a couple times. The live once a couple times, but mostly you catch up on YouTube because life, you know. Tell me about it. Amy. <sighs> I know all about it. Um, Raffle Waffle. I think you are new around here. You finally made it for a live show while you're cooking dinner. Yes! What are you making? What are you making for dinner? I'm so glad you're here for the live. It's really fun. It's, it's an energy thing, you know? We have kind of a an energy thing. I think I think it's it's fireworks out there or, or something. I, I don't know. Last night was bonfire night here in London, you know? Uh Guy Fox night. Eric and I wandered down by Parliament to see what was going on. You know. Not mayhem, but you know, there was a lot of a lot of policemen down there, uh, making sure people weren't up to no good. Uh or I don't know what they do. <laughs> So, um, yes, 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 yes. What's for dinner? That's what I was going to ask. Broth and chicken over there. Mm, that sounds good. Uh, yes, it is always more fun if you can make it live. Pasta and homemade meatballs. Oh, really? Oh, really? One of my favorite things. Mm, yes, excellent. Uh, <laughs> wine. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, that's, that's my two pronged approach to just feeling a bit more powerful. Mm, need a Kleenex. Um, I'm going to the gym and I'm, 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 I'm taking a wine break, but, uh, that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. <laughs> oh no. But, eh. um, excuse me. So, Hey, cool tops by Yovana. Yeah. By Yovana. I, welcome. Welcome back. I think, I, yes, you've been here before. You were here before and you're back and that's great. I'm glad you're back. Uh, good for its demeanor. Dee Marie, why are you torturing me? Don't talk about wine. No, you can talk about wine, please. Converts to meter. That sounds nice. Yeah, it's a little sweet if it's cold and it's crisp. It's great. Um, yes, indeed. Okay, Raffle Waffle, mm -hmm. Michelle Van Scrappy. Excellent. I'm so glad you're here, Marianne. Hi, it's Guy Fox Night. Wait a minute. I thought Guy Fox Night was last night. 
Remember, remember the 5th of November? I thought it was the 5th of November, but you know what? You would know. I would not. Um, Faith, what's up? Faith, I just mentioned you. I just mentioned you. Um, you'll have to watch the replay. No, I was just talking about how you were cool, basically. Um, Jill Alex, excellent. Oh my gosh, Jill, you went to the you went to the the, the exhibit. You went to this exhibit. Jill went to she Jill's in Boston and she went to the Fabric of a Nation exhibit. Now there's more books to my right. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you went. Oh my god. Did you I mean is there stuff in the gift shop <laughs> that we can all buy? Um, I'm so glad to hear that you that you have you've been to the show. I mean, that's awesome. I'm jelly, except you know I'm gonna get to go. I hope you'll meet us there. You know, if you if you want to, you can see it again. You probably would want to see it again. I'm so thrilled. Oh my gosh. Um, and oh hey, Urt um, coat Hello, hello from San Francisco. I'm so glad you're here for the live. Um, I think you've been here once before. I'm trying to remember. I think that you have been. Welcome back. If you have never been here, welcome. And if you're lurking, you're welcome to lurk here. You might find that you fall in love with this place, this digital quilt nerd library. And I'm about to tell you what the show's about, okay? Because we're almost done with welcoming people into the room. I'm Sue John. Hello. You're in the middle of family stuff, looking forward to this conversation when the weekend is over. You know, family. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. It's a lot. Um, but we're really glad you're here. And Rox, so cool. Is yes, Rox. Okay, I see you out there. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Dana Simpson. Yes, I know it's been a while. It's been a while since you were here. But I mean, life, right? Family, all of it. It's, it's, it's a crack up is what it is. Um, okay, and Guy Fox is all weekend. Well, I can hear the guy foxes out there for sure because yeah it's it's literally popping out there little bird stitch yay okay and you you figured out how to subscribe uh through prime if you are new here and you aren't subscribed yet i think you should i think you should give it a try 4.99 a month you support all the quilt nerdery that i prepare and love to share with you and um you don't have to watch ads and if you're an amazon prime member you get one Twitch subscription every month and you can use it on Quilt Nerd. Uh, you have to re-up every month. You have to, you know, redo it every month. It's not just like perpetual. It seems like a small price to pay for um, having a subscription. And uh, that would be wonderful. And I'm so glad that you that you did that. Thank you very, very much. Um, and the quilt on the cover of the book, Jill says, which is a piece of Butler quilt, is uh, outstanding. Oh, awesome. Yes, you're gonna be there in December, and there's a there's a there's gift shop stuff. Excellent. All right, so we have a little mascot here, and that is a bowl of crisps, and I have have some tonight. Okay, um, I have cheese and sour cream or something. Yeah, I mean I'm going to the gym and I'm cutting out the wine, but the crisps no. No, they're not going anywhere. Okay, so here's the deal. So this show is, um, it's called Quilt Nerd because it's very simple. Um, I'm a quilt nerd. And if you are watching the show and uh, you didn't find us by mistake, uh, and you're welcome to be here, uh, you found, you, you're here because you are also a quilt nerd or you think you might be one. And what does it mean to be a quilt nerd? Well, um, if I, I've been saying this a lot lately because I, I think it's really true. It's actually extremely true. It's like a core truth. If quilts were just pretty blankets, I would not be here. Uh, I would have moved on long ago. I am a person who's in a quilting family. I mean, my mom makes quilts. My sisters don't. But okay, my mom makes quilts and so do I. And um, we sort of do public work, you know, like teaching people how to make quilts on television. I did that for a while um, with my mother. And uh, we've written some books and done internet things and all that stuff. So I've been around quilts for a long time and I make them. Um, and so that's great. But if I had 
learned to make quilts and quilts were was cool and I made some and my mom made quilts and that's fine but 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 it's but I wouldn't have stayed around quilts for as long as I have if they weren't if they didn't offer a lot more than just I don't know yeah just being a pretty blanket keeping you warm I mean you know I have like a comforter that keeps me warm also you know I'm not doing a show called Comforter Nerd, you know? Hey, if you're into it, that's fine. I'm sure people who manufacture comforters, people who collect them, you know, I'm sure that they can nerd out on that. And we love a nerd. It doesn't matter what your 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 flavor is. But, um, but quilts are pretty special. They're pretty special because they are historical uh, records. Uh, if you find a quilt from 1802, you know, you can learn a lot about 1802. Um, by looking at that quilt. If you know who made it, forget it. Like, that's great. You can learn a lot about that time period and who those people were and rah, rah, rah. And, but a lot of times a quilt from 1802, for example, doesn't have a name on it. Well, that's interesting. Why don't quilts have names on them a lot of times when we look at quilts from the past? Well, it's because quilts have, were largely made by women and are still largely made by women. And a lot of times women, you know, weren't signing, you know, they weren't, they weren't allowed to study art for a long, long time. Certainly in some places in the world, that's still true. But like, um, not only were quilts just sort of everyday objects, as beautiful as they were, you know, they were just kind of everyday objects. They weren't uh, considered to be uh, as important and as special as a painting. Okay, why? Why? That's a good question. Oh, yes, quilts are pretty interesting. Why aren't they? these beautiful quilts that have been made, why aren't they considered as special as a painting, right? Let's, let's talk about it. That's pretty interesting. Um, people didn't sign their quilts because, yeah, they were everyday objects. They also weren't, they were, they were in the domestic sphere. So who cares, you know? So quilts have a lot to, to offer in terms of what, you know, I don't know, stuff that I'm interested in, you know, history, uh, women, women's history, um, art. What is art? Um, that's a philosophical question. Quilts get us there pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Um, art and fashion and philosophy and economics. How much should a, your grandmother, your beautiful quilt that your grandmother made for you and gave it to your mother and then your mother gave it to you, how much is it worth? How, mu how much would you pay for it? You know, like if you really love that quilt, it's priceless. You, yeah, I mean, you'd pay a lot, you know, if, if someone said, you, <laughs> Pay me for that quilt, you know, if you were going to sell it or something, you know, you'd want a lot of money to part with that quilt. But if you try to sell that quilt, like at a garage sale or something, I don't know, you're not going to get much. So that's very curious, right? We have this object that is priceless and worthless at the same time. Why? Um, fabric is very pretty. It can be. <laughs> fabric can also be not so pretty, but we... But, but if you make quilts like me, like I do, and like so many people here in the chat, um, <laughs> sham nerd. <laughs> I love that. I'm a commercial sham nerd. <laughs> Sorry. Sham nerd is great. Um, wasn't there like a, a little like chamois? It was like a, sh it wasn't, didn't they call it a sham wow? Wasn't that a product? Anyway. Where was I? Oh yeah. Um, quilts are magic. Quilts are magic. You can make them and you can study them. There's tons of quilt scholarship out there. I mean, people devote their whole lives to studying this stuff. People make their lives making quilts. This is an exhibit uh, at the Boston Museum of Fine Art right now. Uh, Bisa Butler, the woman who made this quilt. Yes, that's a quilt. Oh, did you know that? Did you know that quilts are, are, are art? Yes, they are art, some of them. And uh, there are collectors of quilts, there are makers of quilts, there are scholars, and there are uh, dealers. They deal, you know, not your dealer, deal you a quilt. Um, yeah, yeah, dealers and um, um, yeah, collectors, you know, uh, writers and historians. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot because quilts are a lot. They have a lot to offer, they, they mean a lot to us, they're strange objects, they can, they can really, make you think. And I like to think. I like to think I like to think. And um, I like to think about quilts because they, 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 they allow me to think about absolutely everything that I want to know. It's really true. 
So, and they're pretty. Uh, so that's what we do on the show is we just, we nerd out on quilts because what I do in my life is I lecture and I write about quilts and I was an editor for a long time. Um, and I stepped away from being an editor so I could do things like this. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I, when I stepped down. Uh, but I knew that, that it would be something and it's this, it's this show. So, so we get on this, uh, live stream, hello darling, um, three times a week at least. And, um, I just research like I would normally, uh, but I don't do it alone. I do it with you and I show you what I've been looking at and I discover things with you about quilts. And if you want to see what that means, you should keep watching this show. Uh, because it's, there's never been a, sh there's never been any, any content quite like this. And I'm not saying like, oh, because I've got a long way to go to make this thing like really polished and, and, and awesome, you know, production wise. But, you know, it's, our friend Mark calls it a video magazine. And I think that's a really good way to describe it. I'll pull things up on my screen. I'm going to tell you some stuff, read you some stuff. And while I do that, I will be learning along with you and discovering things along with you. And it is nerdy. Mm, 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 mm. It's nerdy. So here's how the show begins. Okay. Uh, quilts and pottery and weaving. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, quilts and pottery and weaving. Um, clothes, a uh, clothes is a little bit different, but yes, correct, Padma. Um, uh, material culture, right? We have these things in our lives and we've had, you know, things that we use, furniture you know, um, designed objects, you know, that we use butter churns and things, these kinds of objects at like quilts, of course, these kinds of objects are not, uh, considered art by, I mean, have not been considered by art by like the keepers of the, you know, the ivory tower, right? The keep, gatekeepers of art with a capital A. And it's a real, it's really complicated. It's really, some people don't think it's complicated at all. They think it's just snobbery and, and, you know, gross, um, uh, what's the word I want? Um, ex exclusivity and, you know, power, it's about power and, and oppression, you know, and, and, and sometimes it absolutely is. It depends on who you're talking to and how you're looking at things. But I mean, the objects that are used every day by people can be absolutely gorgeous, but not be considered good enough or important enough to be, you know, at the Getty or, you know, at MoMA or something. So that, so, so things like quilts are considered, um, decorative art, which is, you know, I don't know, <laughs> like a, a painting's decorative. And I, that's, I mean, decorative means more than just decor decoration, but, it, but it, you know what, there's, it's weird. It's weird. It's very, very complicated. And it's very, uh, it's a very long conversation. We've had this conversation here before we will have it again. My belief is that quilts are not considered high art because quilts remind everyone that they're gonna die. <laughs> really, like it's just, it's as close to the body thing, so much of the everyday material objects that we use, you know, it's, they're mortal objects, right? They're mortal objects. We we drink from a pot, a piece of pottery, uh, you know, a, a jug or something, and we wrap ourselves in a quilt and we, we sit on a chair, or lay down in a bed, and it's like, you know, that stuff from day to day and, and the art that we consider capital A art sort of makes us forget that, I think. And that's cool. You can forget, you know, your own mortality if you want. Me, I like to stay close to it. Keeps me grounded. Um, wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's do look at, let's Mary stop being so esoteric. Um, Hey, Raffle Waffle says that this is great. This is, yeah, exactly, Susan. This is very interesting. Raffle Waffle says, because of this show, I found out about the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I'm trying to find finagle a way to do a weekend trip to see it. It's only a three hour drive to Lincoln for me. You are gonna fit right in around here. It's true, you're gonna fit right in. I'm so glad that you are going to make a road trip. It, you know, we called this show Quilt Church for a while, which I loved. Someone said Quilt Church, and I was like, yes, Quilt Church. And then we did a rebrand. Um, but in fact, that's Quilt Church, the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln. It's Quilt Church. It's church for quilts. You'll cry when you walk in. I did. 
Um, and, and, and story quilts. Okay, so Dee Marie, I got, now, five books. This, this, I had four books to talk about, to show you tonight, and now we had five. So look at this. This came right away. This, that we talked about last show on Thursday. Yeah, I ordered that book, like, I, I don't know, anyway. It came quick. And... Dee Marie, you are saying that story quilts, after 40 years of quilt making, Dee Marie says, this, and not much into applique, not uh, super into applique, she says, um, I have to admit, this is the most amazing book I have ever read. Many thanks to this group and Mary. Hell yeah. That is fabulous. And listen, if you didn't see the show, <laughs> hello class, if you didn't see the show last time on Thursday, I mean, it was one for the books. Yeah, narrative quilt cool addicts because of Mary. You know what? Nothing could make me happier. Hang on. This book is great. <laughs> like, ah! It's not just great because it gives you instruction on how to make <laughs> these, these shapes and these animals. But it's got these quilts in it. I mean, are you kidding me? You are, you've got to be kidding me. I've never, I mean, you know what there should be. I really want to write a lot of things. There ought to be a book of, of pictorial quilts. I mean, this is, I mean, this is it. I mean, we, you know, this book exists. It's story quilts and how to make them. And it has instructions of how to make these pictorial quilts. But I mean, there should be a really great book just of story quilts and pictorial quilts, right? Yeah. Um, hmm. So it's just wonderful. You all have to get it. You must, must get it. I found it used. It was not difficult to find that. And you can learn how to do things like this. I mean, don't you want to? I, I would actually, hey, Carol Quilts. You miss Quilt Church because you've been on vacation? Carol, where were you? Where did you go? Did, I mean, it's weird traveling again, right? I mean, I don't know. You don't have to talk about COVID. It's okay. But it's kind of weird, but I hope everything was fine and you didn't feel stressed and you could just relax. I really hope that that is the case. Um, and welcome back. Uh, so yeah, this is just, yeah, 12 bucks, something like that. So, so this came, I'm thrilled. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So there's that. And then uh, this might be a long show. I'm, I, it might just be because I got a lot, I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. Do you remember the quilt folk? Bronte workshop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you remember? Well, I speak. So speaking of books, remember I, I went to the Bronte. So, so if you didn't see it and you don't know what I'm talking about, Bronte sisters born and grew up and died in Yorkshire. And I'm coming to you from England, uh, from London, England. And the Bronte sisters made a quilt really interesting. And it's at this Bronte Parsonage Museum, okay, in Yorkshire. So we did a workshop all about the quilt for Quilt Folk Magazine. It was great, super fun. And when I went to that museum, I learned about the wonderful drawings that, that the Bronte, all of the Brontes were brilliant artists, brilliant. Oh, and I was like, I need a book of these drawings. I, I have to have them. I must have them to look at. So I went on my favorite website for books. Oh my gosh, Abe Books should totally sponsor this show. I have to think about the sponsors, you know? Cause like one day that, that you know, we'll be sponsor worthy someday. That'd be great. That'd be really great. A bookstore, you know, a used bookstore. Be great for quilt nerds. Anyway, look at this. The art of the Brontes. Yeah, look, it's really big. So, Abe is great. Love Abe. Okay. So look at this. Look at this. Ugh. Now, there aren't that many colored plates in here, which was kind of a drag. It's really a catalog. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Ugh. But I, but the, but my favorite one is here. Look. Look at this. Look at that puppy. Look at that puppy chasing. Sorry. It's really hard to like figure out the camera thing. Look at that pup chasing that bird. Look, these are the, the Bronte people, the children. I mean, look at this one. Look at this one. So sharp, Emily Bronte, Flossie. That's the little, the little pup's name, Flossie. Emily Bronte. 
Emily's Dante. <laughs> Wait, where's? Give me one of Charlotte. Charlotte did. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is ri they're ridiculous. They're so nice. Sorry, I know that is like literally the worst, but it's. I mean, it's amazing. It has like all all of their drawings. They were so good. They were just so good. So that came. That was not as cheap, but I couldn't help it. What are we gonna do? We have all these books now in London. Okay, anyway, gotta move on, gotta move on, gotta keep things clipping. So you might recall, if you were at the Bronte workshop, right at the very end, Jenny Smith, oh, I'm, I'm unwrapping another book. <laughs> Jenny Smith, who co-hosted, co who taught and co-hosted that workshop with me said, I, we have a surprise for you, Mary, at the end of the workshop. And she unveiled to me, uh, and it was kind of an invitation too, um, Beatrix Potter grew up, was born, I think, and grew up in the Lakes District of England. And um, excellent, Yvonne, you got the book, excellent. Oh yeah, bird nerd, I'm telling you. Anyway, so um, Beatrix Potter, the you know, the Beatrix Potter. You could just call her Beatrix, you know, like Beyonce, everybody would know, Peter Rabbit. Um, and, and, and she also has, there was a quilt at the place where she, it's on the National Register, her home is, you can visit, visit it. It's a museum similar to the Bronte Parsonage, okay? And in the Lakes District, which I've always wanted to visit. And not only, but not only is there a quilt there um, in the, in the house, that we're gonna study and go and visit and do a workshop about. That's not even it. The VNA, the Victoria and Albert Museum here in London, is going to open oh, a Beatrix Potter exhibit in February 2022. And guess what? Oh, I can't show you. I mean, I'm sorry. I just I can't because it's liter. It would literally be very uncool for me to do it. But Jenny flashed on the screen a picture of another quilt that Beatrix Potter's mother made for her. Uh, it's going to be in the VNA exhibit, this quilt. Oh my God. So I have my connections with the VNA and I think Jenny does too. So we are going to hopefully get a uh, behind the scenes look at the quilt and the exhibit. So because I do the, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Word and bird nerd. A Beatrix Potter workshop is for sure in the works. It's happening. Um, and so I have begun my research. I got this today. The Arch of Beatrix Potter. But what I'm learning so far, let me tell you. Oh. <laughs> okay, hang on. Hang on, let me find something. Oh. What I'm finding out so far, okay, Beatrix Potter. I'll show you something. I mean, it's not. Beatrix Potter is fascinating. Once again, oh, here's some pup, here's some dogs. Once again, quilts lead us to the to the whole world. I, why would I read about Beatrix Potter? I mean, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. There's a whole lot of things in the world that I'm not reading about right now because the world is very big. But here I have this reason to read about Beatrix Potter and to read. There's two, there's two really good biographies. I think she has an autobiography. Anyway, I've started my reading list. And now I get to like learn about the life of this brilliant, fabulous, complicated woman. I know. I know, right? Life is good. Okay, I'm not done yet, I got one more book. So the last book is this one that was at, we went to the Big Waterstones. If you know London Marianne, you'll know um, it's huge down by the um, King's College. It's, it's where all those colleges are in that area of London. I just don't know at all. It's, um, you know. <laughs> don't know. I, I, I was really turned around today. Eric knew where he was going and I was glad because we were on our bikes and I just don't know that whole little area. But there's a huge Waterstones bookstore. Huge, huge, huge. And I found this book, which I have never seen before. Quilting Patchwork and Applique, a world guide. I've never seen it before. On sale for six pounds. Six pounds. Zero pence. Ugh. So this looks great. I mean, this looks really great. Check, check this out. You see? Mm -hmm. Love a good quilt book. So it's really a, a world guide. Isn't that great? My world quilt knowledge could definitely be better. Oh, wow. 
That's Pakistan, I think. Is that right? Tunisia. Okay. Yeah, Raleigh quilts, India. Amazing. So I'm excited about this. And it was on sale. I love a good sale. So that's good. Those are the books. That's the haul. Okay. So now what happens next? Hey, Dana. Dana, Dana. Oh, yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Hey, so demented. So demented. Hello. Oh, I'm so glad that I, I caught you. Everybody, welcome. So demented. It's her first time in the chat. Uh, his or her. We don't know. Friends beyond the binary. Everybody's welcome here. Um, it's your first time here. I'm so glad you are going to like it here. I think you are going to like it here because the people here, they're pretty cool. And the quilts aren't bad either. Um, the way the way the next thing <laughs> happens is that I change what you see on your screen. Uh, I get very small and the screen gets very big. So <clears throat> let me do that. <clears throat> ah, okay. So the next thing uh, here on the agenda uh, is, oh, hey, Caitlin. Caitlin, hi. Caitlin, I think, I think you've been here before. I mean, I usually get the little thing that says first time in the chat. Um, so, so maybe you've, you know, you've been hanging out with us, you know, behind the bleachers doing our nerdy thing. But if not, I really want to welcome you. And if you're back, I'm really glad you're back. And you pulled out your Beatrix Potter book to look for inspiration for your quilt nerd quilt block just last night. Of course, Caitlin. Pfft. Sorry. But I mean, sometimes I think I have this great memory, photographic memory, and sometimes I obviously I'm wrong. Um, good, good, good. Oh, Beatrix Potter movie. Really? Okay, it's on my list. Yes, Marianne, it is the one near Piccadilly Circus. Thank you very much. It is indeed. Um, okay, you're not sure if the movie's good, Yavana. I'll watch it anyway. <laughs> I'll watch it anyway. Um, oh, you're a friend of Carmen. <gasps> you met. I met you in your small chat from Instagram. I love Carmen so much. I miss her. I miss Carmen. Uh, I could just, you know, call her, but <laughs> I miss working with her. Um, okay, the movie's good. Good. Does it have? Michael Fassbender in it. I'm just saying, when I was boning up on the Brontes, I got to watch Jane Eyre with Michael Fassbender, my movie boyfriend. <laughs> I haven't had a crush on a movie star in a long time, but I was like, okay, <laughs> woo. Okay, so here, here is the, your, here is the way this rest of the show is gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna be little in the corner here, and I'm gonna show you things. And I always have a different. So you're looking at my desktop you know my computer here and uh and if you're if you're new just a reminder this is not a lecture this is not i have prepared things to explore with you but this is not like you know this ain't polished you want polished hire me to come speak to your guild which i would love to do uh or come visit me at QuiltCon or another event uh i just booked my tickets my plane tickets for QuiltCon in february um hmm Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so come to, come to Phoenix, come to, to hear uh, my lecture on quilts and fashion and also one on quilts and fine art. And I'm also giving the tours of the special exhibits. I've been doing that for years and I love doing that. They sell out very fast, I have to say. So, um, and, and I'm also doing an interview on stage with Rod Kirikoff. I'll be interviewing him about his collection and his just amazing self. Uh, and the second edition of his book, which is out now, published by Schiffer Books and Quilt Folk. Um, <laughs> what you're looking at is uh, a painting by, you know, hmm, I don't want to cover up any of this painting. So let me just do something about that here. Hang on now. Yeah, I'm going to make myself even smaller. Eee! Ah! <laughs> I'm so small. I'm so small, but I just, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to cover up a Romar Bearden, you know, what? sorry. I'm not going to cover up Romar Bearden. Um, hang on, hang on. I just can't do it. I can't do it. It's like the Mona Lisa, you know? Okay. Well, I have to leave the little, that thing, but I think it's better. Um, so, all right. It has an Egyptian vibe. Yes, exactly. So this is a painting by Romar Bearden and he... Romer Bearden was born in 1911. Uh, it's a collage. This this is a, not a painting. It is a collage. Okay, it's got actual fabric and paper. 
uh, it's mixed media, you could say, and it's very famous. So, so it's at, at MoMA, uh, the Museum of Modern Art in, in New York, and Romar Bearden, I have some stuff, I'm making a little video about Romar Bearden, uh, working on one. So um, he was born in 1911 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, he died uh, at the age of 76 in New York. And uh, this is from a, an exhibit, uh, some, some, uh, some, some writing about, about an exhibit, about him for an exhibit. I, f I forget where it came from. Maybe I have the citation, but these are from my notes. Uh, Romain Bruden's life and art are marked by exceptional talent, encompassing a broad range of intellectual and scholarly interests, including music, performing arts, history, literature, and world art. Bearden was also a celebrated humanist, as demonstrated by his lifelong support of young emerging artists. So, Roman Bearden, African-American man, g genius, so, so intelligent. I mean, he just, the, his work, you, you should just Google image search and just Google when you can, um, Romar Bearden and his art collages he's very well known for his collages i mean i could just show you all kinds of art by romar bearden but i'm gonna just focus on this one and you can do your own exploration um okay wa raffle waffle go enjoy the meatballs go enjoy them we'll see you next time um yes and he uh he uh, what, was, what was i gonna say so 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 romar bearden a lot of his work um incorporates or, or references or sort of um, um, seems to, to focus on or have in the background textiles. Textiles are just uh, often showing up in his, in his work. And this is, of course, a great example. This uh, is called Patchwork Quilt, okay? Um, it was made in 1970 by Romar Bearden. Um, and this is a quote from Mr. Bearden about this work. This is from MoMA. Quote, I try to show, unquote, Bearden said, okay, quote, that when some things are taken out of the usual context and put in the new, they are given an entirely new character, unquote. A strategy of fragmentation and recombination informs Bearden's approach to art making. The reclining figure at the center of the work resembles those of Egyptian tomb reliefs, and its flattened pictorial space recalls Cubist painting. The background is made from collaged fabric that the artist has assembled into a patchwork quilt, invoking a distinctive African-American domestic tradition. Um, and, 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 hold on. I'm gonna show you one other thing, just so you can see that this artist uh, was very, um, quilts appeared frequently um, in his work. So you, you, you can see, I'm gonna pull this up right here, just this Google search, okay. Um, there you have, and this is the maquette, this is the sketch for that work. Um, brilliant, almost, you know, it's just fabulous that we have that as well, that's uh, at MoMA as well. And then check this one out. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Hang on. This is called Quilting Time. And he had several, several different, um, I found several different works by Romer Bearden that are titled Quilting Time. Um, but this one is my favorite. I mean, look at that down there. Just wonderful, isn't it? So, so he portrayed uh, black life in America in over, over decades and decades. And he worked as a social worker for like 30 years and did his art you know, at night and on the weekends. He was celebrated in his time. He was he exhibited everywhere. Um, the Harlem Artist Guild was a big part of his development as an artist. He, um, uh, he was a jazz fan of jazz. Oh, look at this, look at this detail here. Um, isn't that wonderful? But I mean, he did, he did paintings and collages, you know, uh, modeled after Greek myths. I mean, the guy's brain was just ridiculous and it's just so, so wonderful. Yeah. It sings a song of love to my heart too, Ivana. Isn't it wonderful? 
So, so I just, I just love his work. I love his reverence for quilts. Um, oh, wow. Look at that. That's another sort of sketch, um, for that. This is another painting. Um, it's called quilting time. Um, and then this is Romar. He's just so cool. This guy right here in the sweater. Um, yeah, that, I mean, how cool, man, this he, at the Apollo. So he's in Harlem in that picture. That's great. So yeah, so he died in 88 and he was 76 years old. He had a really, really interesting life. Um, and I encourage you. And, 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 you know, I was thinking today when I was looking at a lot of his, um, a lot of his work, many different, this is a textile, I believe, by the way, um, isn't a collage patchwork. I mean, it, it is patchwork. You're taking disparate parts, little pieces of things, and putting them together into a whole. And you know that, yeah, and, and I mean, that, that's, that's what quilting is, right? That's what piecing is. So, so he's, he's just really, oh yeah, look at this. See, you see what I mean by fabric just being a big part of his vision and his execution, just textiles and fabric. I just love it. Yeah, it's not a quilt behind him, but it ought to be. All right. All right, so that is our desktop picture, okay? And now, and now, there, I've got two, two things for you tonight, um, sort of two topics. And one, one is just kind of, I just want to look and learn about Pamela Studstill. And Pamela Studstill, we are going to read about her. Um, some of you may know her name. You might know it because I uh, <laughs> I mentioned, maybe I mentioned a lot of times that I missed out. I, I wanted to purchase a quilt by Pamela Studstill that I found on an auction site by accident um, a year ago or more that was affordable. I mean, I think I, I can remember. It was like... $500 or $600 and it's like that's a lot of money but like I really like her work by the way what you're looking at this is a study this is a drawing a, a, a study for a quilt so you're in for a treat okay because that is a drawing of a quilt that she wants to make or made okay so um obviously 20th century artist um we're gonna read more about. She was born in 1954 in Texas. Okay, so she's in her 70s now, uh, barely. 1954, yeah, late 60s, in her late 60s now. Um. So yeah, and so I I I bid on that quilt. I was just like, what is this? I don't think it was a large work. Who knows? At that price, maybe I didn't read it right. Maybe it was a, a drawing. You know, it could have been. But I I was like, oh my god, I could have. I could have something of Pamela Studstill. And I, something happened. Like I set my alarm wrong or something to go like, see if I could get it, you know? And I and I was outbid by like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something like that. So I, I, I mean, I screwed up, I screwed it up, but whatever, I, I can enjoy it with you like this and it's fine. So I'm gonna, does anyone know, yeah, how big is the study in pencil? I do not know. That's a good question. Uh, I, some of these, this is from Heritage Auctions, um, which is an auction site, maybe the one that was, um, that had that quilt that I wanted to buy. But I found several times, even today, that they don't give dimensions. Or no, no, uh, they don't give year, the year of the thing. They might give dimensions of this. And I'll put all the links to everything that we're going to talk about tonight, at least most of them, in the Discord after the show. Uh, so you can, I'll certainly put in the Heritage Auction site and things for Pamela Studd still, so you can take a look. So so I have uh, here printed out a, a piece from the Smithsonian uh, American Art Museum, Smithsonian Museum of American Art. And uh, yeah, oh, just wait, Little Bird Stitch. You're gonna, you're gonna enjoy this. Um, I'm going to read this from that um, post about her. It's sort of an interview because some of her work is uh, in the Smithsonian. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
one thing you should know is that these quilts I gathered like I've got like 26 slides or something to show you as I read you this material and I have not read it yet it's something I try to do sometimes we get you know surprised and I the thing that I'm going to read to you while I'm showing you slides is not you know perfect thing to read to you or doesn't have all the information we want but it's that moment of discovery and learning with you that I love so this should be fine as we look at Pamela Studstill's work um but I have not read it yet. Okay. A leading member of the, oh, oh I was going to say, sorry, sorry. Um, the quilts that I'm going to show you, all of, her, all of her quilts, almost all of them are just numbered. So quilt 132 or quilt 34, quilt 71, you know? Um, and I do have years on this, so I can pop up because I, I retitled all of the images. So this was made in 1980. It's quilt number 68. So, I know, yes, such a good use of, of striped fabric, thousand percent. Hey, Myra, okay, Italian Film Festival? Hell yeah. Oh, wow, Linocent. About to do it. Girl, it's good to see you always, Myra. Viva la Visconti. Um, okay, so, so, yeah, so, so all of, I have years on these, so I will pop up as we look at them and, and let you know the year that she made this. Okay, 1980. This is from Smithsonian. A leading member of the contemporary art quilt movement, Pamela Studstill's geometric pieced fabric constructions are fields of dazzling color. Originally trained as a painter, the artist deftly combines traditional, look at this, OMG, oh my God, Can, uh, deftly combines traditional quilt making techniques with modern scientific color and design theory to create intricate patterns whose vibrant, multi hued, and evolving geometrics produce a shimmering effect. Whew. Yeah. Quote, I like all that pattern, she says. I like the way it moves. That shimmering quality is the mark of a successful quilt. Wow. Oh, it's so great. Oh, look at that one. Wow. Um, oh, sorry. I have, oh yeah. Okay. Never mind. Um, fascinated by impressionist and neo-impressionist painting, uh, methods. This one was made in 83. Uh, the optical mixture of divided color and the color theories of Johannes Itten, Hans Hoffmann, and Joseph Albers. Makes sense. Stud still brushes columns of dots, curved and wavy lines, and brick-like strokes of acrylic paint on small squares of opposing solid color cottons. Did we get that? Okay. She is not unique among studio quilt artists in adding pigments, but few have developed such a rigorous and effective approach. Quote, by painting on fabrics, I achieve a greater range of color and pattern than would be possible by just using solid colored fabrics. Now that is interesting. I agree, word and bird nerd with the log cabin thing. And agreed. Now that's interesting because when you think about the modern quilters, right, and the solid colors, solid color fabric, that, huh, that is really interesting. So, so you know, the modern quilters, uh, negative space, geometric, you know, quilting, straight lines. You know, there's a lot of like minimalism, abstraction. You know, the modern quilt that, you know, they have a definition. They have a, a pretty specific, you know, um, look, <laughs> a specific style, you know, as as sort of proclaimed by the modern quilt guild. But there's no, are people painting on their quilts in the modern quilt guild? You Because know, I often wonder, like, you know, the difference between the moderns and the art quilters sometimes is pretty, it's pretty gray, you know? Because you've got quilts, so many modern quilts are made for the wall, you know? So art quilts are made for the wall. That's why they're art quilts. That's what defines an art quilt, a studio art quilt. You know, you can say all quilts are art, cool, you know, that is, that is for sure a legit position to take. But to be defined as an art quilt or a studio art quilt, what that means is that the quilt has been made for the wall, not for the bed. And so, of course, at QuiltCon, you know, these are show quilts that you see and and uh, so many quilts that are made in the modern style are made to be used by a person. But a lot of the modern quilts are made for the wall. So there are quilts, but the modern quilters that make them, I don't know that they would call them studio art quilts or call themselves studio art quilters. 
so so when Pamela says this, when Pamela the stud stud still says, by painting on my fabrics, I achieve a greater range of color and pattern than would be possible by using just solid color fabrics. So I mean, the amazing modern quilters there, you know, out there, well, they want to they want to achieve a great range of color and pattern, as great a range of color and pattern as possible. So when is the lizard gonna crawl out of the ocean kind of moment, you know, when one of the modern quilters starts painting on her quilt, you know? What does that mean? These categories, what do they mean? I don't know. I don't know. Hang on, what is going on here? Okay. Um, Great. So let's look at another one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You see the paint. So here's the paint, by the way, you could probably tell, but it's right there. It's in there. And, th and I mean, this is painted too. I think it's like watercolored right there or something, you know, and then this is like metallic. It's so cool. Oh, she's so good. And then this is all painted, right? That's not a fabric. That's, I mean, it's fabric, but it's painted on top. Okay. Hello. Okay, well. Um, Stud still begins a quilt by creating. Oh, yeah. Um, I hate wet processes too, Marianne. Stud still begins a quilt by creating a detailed drawing of the complicated patchwork design we saw that on graph paper. This underlying grid is an essential ordering device. It provides both an explicit and implicit structural framework on which to elaborate shifting relationships among shapes hues and values. The quilts themselves are composed of a profusion, that's a great word, I need to use profusion more, uh, a profusion of small squares and rectangular strips of cloth, usually two to four inches in dimension. That's really, but sometimes as small as a postage stamp. Ouch. Yeah, I agree. Yep, some dye their own fabrics. True, Padma, totally true. Uh, and it's a blurry line, mostly defined by the categories in judged shows, Little Bird says. Yeah, that's very true. I'd zoom in more on this one, but it's a it's not a very high resolution image, so I'm gonna go forward. This is this is similar to the one I wanted to buy, <laughs> I think. Once the design is finalized and the drawing color coded, Stud still cuts out the individual pieces as required from supplies. Mm. Um, of commercially dyed cottons. Okay, some of the colored patches are then painted with contrasting hues to create a colorful random pattern within a pattern, but before being mach machine sewn together. Okay, so she's painting before, I don't know why, I thought she like, put the top together and then painted, but it's she's painting the pieces after she cuts them. That's crazy, that's crazy. Um, but before being machine sewn together, the individual blocks of cloth are first pinned to the wall. Okay, yeah, so the subtle chromatic and tonal gradations that are the essence of Stud Still's art can be gauged precisely. It's called a design wall, dude, we know. Um, quilt number 17. Hmm, I have quilt number 17. Okay, hang on. I got, I'm gonna pull up quilt number 17. Don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Okay, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do, I, I hang on, just, I'm gonna pull it down and I'm gonna pop it back up because I don't, I don't want you to, I have quilt 17 and the reason it's not, uh, well, it wasn't in the article that I'm reading to you, but I have it because it is um, at the Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. They're the ones that have it. Hide sidebar, brr, 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 boom. Um, oh, maybe, okay, whatever. That's quilt 17. Quilt 17, 1982, is an early example of Stud Still's distinctive amalgam of pattern painting and quilt making and reveals her extraordinary skills as a colorist and pattern maker. The quilt is numbered, not titled. Stud Still says, quote, I don't want people to think about things when they look at the quilts. Um, unquote. Uh, the quilts now number more than 107. And this was, I don't know if I know the year on this. Even though, yeah, well, there's a lot more than that because some of the quilts that I have pulled up for you today um, number in the one, 
50s, certainly the 130s. Even though the individual fabric components vary in shape and size, Quilt 17, like all of Pamela Studstill's patchworks, has a tessellated or mosaic-like appearance. Repetition of vertical, horizontal, and diagonal strips and squares and rectangles help structure the intricate five by five foot composition. But the artist deliberately undermines methodical order by arbitrarily varying the arrangement of her piece shapes. As a result, the geometric composition collapses into a delightful riot of color. As the eye moves from top to bottom, Quilt 17 undergoes a subtle but definitive transformation in color and light. Gradually, almost imperceptibly, lighter color values, let me pull the whole thing, yeah, lighter color values change into darker ones. Quote, each of my quilts is a study in light, unquote. Surface paint helps ease the transition from one color to another. In scientific terms, such a progressive step-by-step -step alteration is known as a parquet deformation. A parquet deformation, as in like, Parquet floor, parquet deformation, huh? But in Studstill's case, the principle of incrementally graduating tones was not solely based on scientific, scientific or color theory, but also intuited from the experience of her Texas Hill country surroundings. She writes, quote, I am inspired by landscape views and vistas, fields of all kinds and changes in my local landscape. Hmm. Um... She quilted, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting that she that she paints. I mean, that she paints her fabric and then stitches it together. I don't know why I thought she would paint afterwards, but she's basically making like little tiles, right? Like little mosaic tiles. It's it's really interesting. Okay. Sidebar. Okay, I'm going back up, guys. Don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Okay, oh, oh, here we go. Um, here we go. So let's look at a few more stud stills, right? And I've got a little bit more here. Yeah, okay, so this is from, this is from something. So what do you think about this? It's, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, 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 her work is, she, so, so early on in the, in the art quilt, um, um, emergence she she was really a name early on like Yvonne Porcella Jan Myers Newberry um Carol Fallert um Terry Mangott um Pauline Burbage you know and Pamela Studstill like you know these people were trailblazers you know really really um just all of the, the the famous book or the really canonical book the art quilt by penny mcmorris and michael kyle um it's so good it's such a great book and um you know stud stills in it she she her name appears in the book many times because she was really one of the people at the forefront um doing doing this amazing new kind of quilt i mean this quilt is a new quilt. It's 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 not like anything that came before. I mean, there's so many different genres of quilts and types of quilts, and and such creativity and all kinds of wonderful innovation and and imagination in quilts before the 19, you know, 80s, right? I mean, in the 1960s and 70s, the art quilt was starting to arise, but like in the 80s and 90s, and it was just really, really exciting and because there was this new vibe man that's kind of cool oh and by the way i've saved the best for last so i'm going to read to you a little bit more this is uh, from texas monthly um and uh the art of the texas quilt it's called masterpieces the art of the texas texas quilt uh it's 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 just got a little bit more from her um okay pamela studstill of pipe creek texas wait hang on one second um let me see Da, 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 da. The 1980 quilt is the 64. Okay, thanks, Dee Marie. I'm still really small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, I'm still really small. <laughs> help, help, I'm really small. Thank you. I don't want to be quite that small. I mean, let's, I don't want to be, thank you. <laughs> hey, nose to quilts. Thanks for coming in and saying, wow, that could be really big. Oh, ah. okay. Let's just, thank you. <laughs> 
Why is it funny to think about somebody being really small? Okay. If that's too, if I'm too big, let me know. Hey, so demented. Hi, it's good to see you. Uh, so demented says, um, yeah. Uh, when you look at these, you can't help but be reminded of the Sean Kimber small piecing and stitching. Fantastic. That is so interesting. That's so interesting. Okay. We're going to look at Sean Kimber. Of course, that is very, very astute. That is a very good. That is a, you know what it is. That is hella nerdy. <laughs> that is a quilt nerd chef's kiss. Okay, way to go. Totally, totally. Sean Kimber's tiny, tiny piece. Love it. We're going to look at Sean Kimber after we look at this because it's a perfect uh, connection to be made. Okay, cool. Great. Pamela Studstill of Pipe Creek, Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I live for it. Same. Uh, of Pipe Creek, Texas. Uh, so this is from this Texas Monthly article. It said 1969 on the, it's wrong. That's wrong. It's, it was not written in 1969. So I don't know when it was written, but here it is. Not that long ago. Uh, so it's Texas, Pike, Pipe Creek, Texas is 20 miles outside of San, Fran San Antonio. Okay. Uh, Studstill is a na nationally acclaimed artist. Maybe you've never heard of her, but her work has been exhibited far and wide from the Smithsonian's Renwick, Renwick Gallery in Washington, D.C., to the American Craft Museum in New York City, to the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan. She has won two National Endowment for the Arts Fellowships, whoa, one of which at $15,000 is among the highest possible awards. Told you she was a big deal. Museums, galleries, and corporations across America have collected this native Texan's art, which is now sold almost exclusively through an Atlanta gallery lo located in the swank neighborhood of Buckhead. Oh, yes, my, my. Um, I went to a wedding in Buckhead once. I was underdressed. Um, and those, and I looked great. Um, the stud still, stud still was trained as a painter, but you won't see oils or watercolors in these halls of prestige and power. Her masterpieces are all quilts. Hmm. Although bearing scant, oh, look at that. Isn't that great? Good detail shot. Um, ooh, Therese May. Also a nerd award there, little bird uh, in the chat. Okay, bearing scant resemblance to what most of us grew up with, homey patchwork crazy quilts or symmetrically patterned blankets with quaint names like double wedding ring and log cabin, Studstill's works do have roots in old fashioned quilt making. In fact, her first quilt was a traditional nine patch she made under her grandmother's tutelage when she was 16. Interesting. I was hoping we would learn when she started. Stud still is now known for her art quilts, but her inspiration remains a fundamental, fundamental passion for cloth, pattern, and color. Oh, look at that. I'm dead. That passion is shared by thousands of other Texans. I like this article. It's pretty good. Who make quilts for a hobby, a profession, or even from a self-confessed obsession. Many of these devotees who love quilts for being so much more than the sum of their pieces, thank you, will converge in Houston starting October 29th, okay, for the International Quilt Festival. This is in Texas Monthly, right? Okay, now we, we understand why. The largest annual quilt show in the world. Last year, the festival drew 51,000 aficionados who attended how-to classes, shopped for supplies, Serious, oh, uh, and visited more than 30 specialty exhibits. Of all these exhibits, serious quilt makers will be focused on the one hosted by the International Quilt Association. The IQA show will give out $67,500 in prize money to the top quilts in 16 categories, including $10,000 awarded to the best of show. Wow. Along with other quilt exhibitions, such as, such as Visions in San Diego, mm-hmm, uh, Quilt National uh, in Ohio and the annual American Culture Society show in Paducah. The Houston Expo is a competitive international showcase. We have to talk about festival at some point, you know, the whole thing. But, but whatever the venue, quilts by Texas artists can al always be counted to rank among the best. It's true. The Texans. In this issue, we'll introduce you to some of these homegrown textile treasures. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back to Studstall. I was going to be a painter, said st says Studstill, but the first thing I did after I got my BFA, it was really odd, was to make a quilt, unquote. Perhaps it was in her genes. Studstill grew up in San Antonio and is the granddaughter of a quilt maker whom she visited often as a child. At her, 
we're going to see this the full quilt of this in just a second. I thought this was interesting. Very different, right? And the year on this is 2003. So it's not like that. I was like, oh, this must be an older work when I found it. But, but it's, it's not. It's newer. I mean, relatively. Um, she learned quilting techniques by the age of seven at her grandmother's side. Now in her mid-40s. Okay, Stud still ranks among the top art quilters in America. Museums that have uh, collected her work. Okay, mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Hmm. I thought the resolution was better on that one. I really like that quilt, but it's making me dizzy to look at it because it's blurry. Okay, wow, that's crazy. Um, Stud still says she gives her quilts numbers. Okay, bye, Dana. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Stud still says she gives her quilts numbers rather than names so that people will feel free to see different things in them. She's now working on uh, number 135. Of all her works, she's kept only two. That's quilt 17. Let's move into this one. That's because she enjoys the process even more than the finished product. Quote, I'm perfectly happy to have them floating around out there in the world. Unquote. And here's that one. Okay. Really interesting. And I, I told you I saved the best for last. I've got a couple pictures of her. I really need a ship. Oh, yeah. So this is when, um, that's Pamela Studstill. And she, this is from 2018 when she brought two of her quilts, including quilt 17, I'm pretty sure, um, to donate to the International Quilt Museum, which is where she is, um, to their permanent collection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is Pam and the effervescent, brilliant, kind, lovely Carolyn Ducey, who is the head curator of the, at the Quilt Museum. That's Ducey and that's Studstall. Forces of nature, obviously. Okay. That's Studstall. And this, the, I'm really glad there's a watermark on the, the next couple photos because um, I got them here from, from this, this lady, Lutla Paler. That's Pamela Studstall. Um, but this blogspot.com place is where I got the next couple pictures, um, from 2016. I love this quilt, this quilt. So this is the quilt museum the, this person who's writing this blog post who took these pictures, went to the quilt museum. Is it true? Oh God. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe no, no. I don't know that it was the quilt museum. Oh God. Well, we'll probably find out. But, uh, I, I mean that quilt, I just, I love it so much. It does look like, that one did look like a Palampore. Yeah, the Quilt Museum rocks, you gotta go. I mean, and become a member, become a member. These, the Quilt Museum is very important. If you're a quilt nerd, it's like, yeah. So I love that quilt. And here, this is another painting, right? Another study for a quilt, quilt number 75. You see all that, you know, the, the graph paper, you know, it still works, man. It still works. I can't do that to graph paper, but you don't need a computer to do something like that. Just amazing. Look at, I mean, her, her understanding, because remember, we've learned she was trained as a painter, right? I mean, look at that color moment, you know, this, this watery aqua, you know, this just pale sherbet, you know, ballet slipper pink. I like naming colors you know, vermilion. Anyway, it's just, I mean, come on, really? Really? Like, how do you do that? How do you do it? I guess you practice a lot, you know? Anyway, I like this very much. Is that, wait, is that Pamela stuff? I don't know that that is. I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know that it is Pamela Stizzle. I I'm not sure, but I really like that person. <laughs> I thought, but I thought that was her, but I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate. We, lo we love them all. They're all forces of nature, these women that we've seen. Okay. 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 And this is the last quilt and this is my favorite one. And then we'll move on. Um, how many colors have you named? Oh yeah. I have named... I'm not sure. I have to look. Padma's referring to this really, I'll show you at the end of the, at the end of the show, colornames.org. I got to tell you about it. Um, yeah, I like naming colors. So, so this is a stud still and 
that's a detail shot. And this is the quilt. And you know what it's called? Modern Childhood TV Dreams. Made in 1988. Modern Childhood TV Dreams. I mean, it's so cool. And it's, it's titled, right? It's not an untitled one. Isn't that great? I mean, wow. It's so perfect. It's cute. It's funny. It's, it's just, I just love it. I just love it. It's so smart and funny and wonderful. So modern childhood TV dreams. So that's Pamela Studstill. And you know, she lives in Texas and I could just get in touch with her, you know, talk to her. That'd be cool. But you know, now I know, see, I'm, this is all, this is all part of a grand plan, right? Like now I know more about her. So when I talk to her, I could ask her some intelligent questions, you know, mind blown. I know it's so great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. It takes you back to your sixties childhood. It, it takes me right back to the eighties too. Cause it was made in 88, you know? So I was nine totally in front of the TV, you know, not constantly, but I was, I was on that TV. Um, mm -hmm. my pleasure, <laughs> Susan. Sorry. It's like Willow the Wisp. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. You look at that little guy. He's so great. Okay. So, um, next up, next up, we have to talk about Baltimore album quilts and it's like, ugh, you'd think that would be, you know, well, it's a lot to do on like in the second half of the show and it's, you know, it's 1130 here. So we'll see how far we get. But the thing is this, I need to learn about them. I need to learn more about them because I'm writing an article that was due last week. It's late, um, but it's okay. My editor said it was okay. So I'm writing an article about Boston, the Boston Applique Society. And I was writing it and it was fine. And I've interviewed a couple people, but I really, I mean, you can't screw up you can't screw up talking about Baltimore album quilts. And of course we're going to fact check and all that stuff. But like, I want to say something intelligent about Baltimore album quilts. I want to say something, you know, I want to have, I want to have some knowledge about them that I don't think I really have. So I thought we would look, we would look at them a little bit. And, and you know, some people just love Baltimore album quilts so much. I mean, there's an applique society, uh, you know, that's, Hang on. Yeah, an applique society in Baltimore that helps steward these quilts. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're amazing, but I've never, this one's at the Met. Um, I've never really looked at them deeply. And I see you, Coco Pelle, agreed. Um, and so I thought we would. I thought we could together. Um, I've got some stuff to read and visually, visually, hang on, I gotta do something here. Yeah. I'm going to show you, we're going to go to the Baltimore Museum of Art. We're going to go to the Baltimore Museum of Art because, oh, oh, pause, pause. I almost forgot, but I have it right here. There's an exhibit right now in San Angelo, Texas. Are there Texas folks out there? There may, <laughs> it's exactly what you're doing, Padme. You're helping me with my homework. It's exactly what you're doing. I'm using you. You're being used um, in the best kind of way. Um, but if you're in Texas or you're near San Angelo, I'll put this in the Newswire channel in our Discord. There's an exhibit right now, September 23rd. It opened and it goes till November 28th. And it's called Hand Stitch. Am I bringing it up here? No. Hand Stitch uh, 2021 Works by Texas Artists. And Pamela Studstill has a quilt in the show. Yeah. Amazing. So I'll put that in the, in the discord. Okay. Under newswire. So if you're watching the replay, I hope you, I hope you watch it right away and don't miss that show hand stitch 2021. It's at the, um, sorry, the San Angelo museum of fine arts, you know, Hmm. Excellent. Yes. 
yeah, there are a couple different, well, there's um, a couple people I've talked to um, at the Baltimore Applique Society um, about the organization and about the quilts. And Mimi Dietrich is a delightful person who I didn't talk to because she's getting her own feature in Quiltful Magazine. Uh, and I'm writing about sort of, anyway, she's not going to be, we're not going to double dip on Mimi. She's going to have her own article. So I didn't want to interview her for this other piece in the magazine. Um, but she's lovely. And I mean, just the people who are really experts in Baltimore album quilts, I mean, their, their knowledge of, of the quilts, of course, but the process and the families that made these quilts or the families that have them or owned them for some time. It's really interesting. Um, so, so this quilt, okay, so we're going to look at the, the Baltimore Museum of Art because the Baltimore Museum of Art has a lot of Baltimore album quilts and a couple, and a bunch of other ones too that are really, really neat. And I had never looked at the Baltimore um, Art Museum's collection of quilts. So first I'm going to read you this. I'm going to tell you that this quilt is from uh, the Met and it was made in 1849. Um, mm -hmm. and the designs are attributed to Mary Hergen Roder Simon. And by the way, the Baltimore album quilt is a kind of album quilt. So like the album quilt is, is like what you like at the quilt study or at the um, quilt museum, if you were searching for Baltimore album quilts, if you're searching the collection, you wouldn't search Baltimore album quilts. You would search album quilts. Okay. Um, this Baltimore presentation quilt, this is from the Met, is appliqued with vibrant floral wreaths, a delicate basket of fruits and flowers, and an, and assorted birds in multicolored cottons. Look at this bird. Whoop. Here on the side. They're turned to the side, of course. Um, look at that basket. Oh my gosh. I mean, really? Ha. Huh. It's most likely the work of Mary Simon, born 1810. Um, hey, Christmas. Yes, what an album quilt is. Okay, so we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, Mary Simon is thought to have worked as a professional quilt maker in a prof Okay, whoa. Mary Simon is thought to have worked as a professional quilt maker in Baltimore during the 1840s and 1850s. The designs on the quilt are separate bits of brightly colored fabric. Since this quilt was made completely by one person, most likely to commemorate a specific occasion, it is best described as a presentation quilt rather than an album quilt in which blocks would have been made by a group of quilt makers. That's part of what an album quilt is. Um, because the quilt came to the museum, the Met Museum, without a provenance, the circumstances of its commission are unknown. So this is called pr a presentation quilt at the Met. I mean, this quilt is ridiculous. I just don't even know. Hang on, let me show you. They got a detail. Look at this business. Look, look at that detail. This image is in the public domain. You know, a lot of the Met, the Met um, Museum images, not, I mean, a lot of it is not uh, in the public domain, a lot of those, the images, but, you know, a lot of the quilts that they have in their collection, the beautiful high resolution images of these works are copyright free. It's insane, no? I mean, look at this, look at this one person that I, I mean, like I said, I had not read that before. I am flabbergasted. I guess part of what has kept me from looking at Baltimore album quilts that carefully or that deeply is that, I don't know, like they're so fancy. And that's so cool, but they're so fancy that like, okay, I'll just be honest. I'm scared of the people, the women who made these quilts. I mean, I just feel like 
they're just, I, I mean, what is wrong with me? It's like, a, it's like a fearing authority or something. I just picture like the people who made these quilts, I mean, are just so good at it and so particular and so careful. And I'm just not that way. <laughs> I'm not. And like, I love the quilts I make. I love the quilts I love, I love, you know, and, and that's cool. But I just, I just could never be this good. And so I think about laboring on these flowers and I would just labor on these birds forever and they would look so bad. And I feel like I have this vision of some lady, some very like prim woman standing over me and going like the quilt police, basically, you know? And I think, I think I'm, I'm just intimidated by them. That's the quickest way to say I'm intimidated by them. They're so beautiful. And looking at them really up close like this, this is actually really, really good. Because taken all together, it's this explosion of complex flowers and leaves and things. But then you get down to the details like this, and it's just whew, that bird. I mean, that's pictorial, you know? Look at the eye. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, we love a high resolution photo. We love her. Look at the eyeball on this bird. Oh, I love, it's like we're looking right at, look at that. Is that painted? You know, hashtag stud still, hashtag 1988. Yes, okay, Dee Marie says, <laughs> yeah. I uh, think, okay, you all get this. You're, you're feeling me on this. And Dee Marie says, it's like they operate in a different worldly dimension. Totally. Yeah, exactly. You don't make this for free. Yeah. Not intimidated. Okay. Just in awe, Dean Marie says of the precision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this this was made by one person, Padma. Oh, sorry. Um, made by one person. I mean, go on, girl. Go on. Amazing. Okay. Oh, God. This basket. Okay, we got to zoom in on the basket. Oh. And this, yeah, I mean, holy crap. So is the, I mean, she stitched down, she appliqued the blue and the yellow, right? And then the red on top. I mean, obviously. And this says something's basket embroidered there, or it looks like it's drawn on there. And the quilting. I mean, look how tiny, tiny, tiny. The stitches are so tiny. Oh, God. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't know. You you, you know, you, a person could could hope to be so lucky to learn, learn a few things from the person who made this, right? And she was probably great. This is great. This harp. Oh, cool. All right. So... So I'll put the link to this quilt, this uh, presentation quilt, really interesting, in the Discord, for sure. And um, hey, Joyous Fibers. No, okay, everyone. Joyous Fibers first learned to quilt doing a Baltimore album quilt. Oh, oh. I thought all quilts took years and certainly never got this good. Oh. Uh, I love you and I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. That's, you know, it, if you do a really hard quilt to start with, the first, the first quilt you ever make, you don't know you can't, you know? You don't know that you shouldn't be doing that. That's really intense. Good job. Do you still have it? Do you still have your, I, I mean, I'll bet you that would be my favorite Baltimore album quilt. I'm serious because like a beginner quilter doing Baltimore album, that's going to have the vibe I like, you know, that sort of like, hey, <laughs> that kind of deal. Okay. Um, no, we're going to stay right here, actually. And, oh, yes, of course. Where do you suppose I looked? I looked at the Internet Archive to see what books were available out there for Baltimore album quilts. And there are several. These are both the same book here, I believe. Uh, hey, it's Ellie Sinkowitz. Just, uh, who, who said Ellie, by the way? All the blocks. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Someone mentioned Ellie Sinkowitz. Sinkowitz. Uh, Dean Marie did. Of course, Dean Marie. So if you want to take a look at 
um, you know, more of more of this good stuff. I have a little bit um, to read to you from from this book. I think, I think yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can you can get a couple Baltimore album books right there at the Internet Archive. And again, if you missed the last show, definitely watch the replay on YouTube or here on Twitch because we talk about the Internet Archive and we discover its joys and its ecstasies. Um, okay, so I wanted to mention that. And I also wanted to show you this, and then I'm going to go to the Baltimore uh, Art Museum with you. So I found this article uh, in the Los Angeles Times in 1994, okay? And it's interesting because of what it says about about them at that time. So, so it, I'll just say, uh, a Baltimore album quilt made in the mid-19th century can fetch $25,000 the Los Angeles Times is saying. And that's from Joel Kopp, K-O-P-P, -P, who was a New York City antique dealer. Uh, Joel and Mary Kopp, I think. Famous dealers. Um, a record price for a Baltimore album quilt came in 1987 when a buyer paid $176,000 for an 1840 quilt at Sotheby's. That might be the reconciliation quilt. We'll talk about it later. Baltimore album quilts have become as valuable as a master painting, said Jennifer Goldsboro, chief curator at the Maryland Historical Society. So this is interesting. I'll put it, I'll put the link in our um, Discord because it's just an interesting piece of history. I mean, in, the, in 1994, from what I know, from what I've heard, I mean, the quilt dealer uh, antiques you know, buyer's market was a hot. I mean, in the 90s, people were really buying quilts, it seems. So that it was, the average Baltimore album was going for $25,000 in 1994. I thought it was very interesting. And I wonder what the prices are these days. Interesting. Okay, so here's the Bal here's the Baltimore, um... oh, cool, cool website. Oh, I love that. The Baltimore Museum of Art. And... Oh, I just love that animation. That's great. Um, <laughs> Rox is like, I can't even type presentation quilt. <laughs> That's funny. So here's the search for quilt. It's so simple to be a quilt nerd. You just have to go to search boxes and just type in quilt and you usually get quite a bit of things. So isn't this nice? So they have 67 quilts. And of course they have a number of Baltimore album quilts. And I think what I will do is just, so I have some from Ellie's book and I'm just going to pick a couple things at random from the introduction because I'm, I'm not going to read all of this. It's, it's very long. Um, and, but let's see, hang on. Okay. Hang on. Um, mm hmm. hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Child's album quilt. Okay. So an album quilt, who was asking? Rox? Um no no, Christmas. Christmas was asking about an album quilt. So yeah, so an album quilt is I mean I so different people contribute blocks to an album quilt. I think that's that's like one understanding I have of it but also when I think about an album quilt I think about what it's not a sampler but an album quilt to me like that wide sashing happens a lot in album quilts that I have seen and like each block is different and maybe it was made by a different person you know all different people maybe it was made by one person but that it portrays and and and, and, and pictorial I don't consider album quilts really pictorial so much, although they are, but the florals and the birds and the harps and the, um, yeah, birds, not fauna necessarily, but the flora and the, and the birds and, you know, berries and lots of flowers. Um, each sort, each block of the quilt has a different 
thing to offer. You know, one will be, you know, a cornucopia, one will be a harp or whatever. And wide sashing happens a fair amount in the quilts that I'm thinking of. We'll see more of them. Um, and, and yeah, pictorial maybe, but not necessarily a story quilt. The reconciliation quilt, which we should look at next time, is an exception. But but not scenic. Thank you. Exactly. So demented. Reconciliation quilt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So demented. The reconciliation quilt sold for, yeah, like $265,000. Exactly. Um, it's not a, yeah, it's not a, it's, it's an album quilt, but not a, a Baltimore one, I don't think. Anyway, well, let me just show it to you for heaven's sakes. For heaven's sakes. Um, hang on. I can pull this, this guy here. Whoops. Hang on, hang on. Sorry. Don't want to do that. Don't want to screw that up. Hmm. Okay. Reconciliation quilt. It's, it's you know, we talk about Harriet Powers' uh, two quilts as being among the most famous quilts in the world. This one is also kind of a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Get a nice big image of it. And it's another one that, uh, you know, I should learn more about, which is why we can talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about it next time. Um, yeah, this was, yeah, like, yeah, $300,000 or something. Um, and I believe, yeah, it's, yes, it's owned by, is it owned by the Quilt Museum? I'm pretty sure in Lincoln. Anyway, I mean, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it later. It's amazing. Um, okay, so 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 the album quilts here are not, yeah, not scenic. Not scenic, as Patna says. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab one of these, one of these, one of these Baltimore album quilts, these alleged Baltimore album quilts. You see the sashing Christmas, you know? Expand. Album quilts like, so this is from Ellie's book. Album quilts like their book made counter parts. Oh, this is a super famous quilt. I'm pretty sure. This bird, this this bird, I, I've seen this bird before. There's that heart and hand down here. The making of both types of albums swelled to fad-like status in the middle decades of the 19th century. Study of each leads to understanding of the other. Creation of both being its cultural... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. We gotta know more about, wait a second, the album quilt thing is confusing. A collection, okay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, my great aunt Elsie Crowley gave me an album quilt, okay. Inscribed in part, Mrs. Mrs. Eliza Palmer in 1854, it had come to her through her New York State ancestors. A collection of separately signed, same-shaped appliques. It appears to be a friendship album quilt, not this quilt that you're seeing, but this is from the article, made of different red calicos. Surely those same collecting passions that seem forever to have bound quilt makers, avid assemblers of fabric patterns and threaded technologies, inform the classic album quilts. Okay. Um, and album quilts like their, oh, book made counterparts. Okay. It's, she's talking about collecting things earlier on in, in this text. Uh, album quilts house collections on a theme. The making of both types of album quilts, of albums, uh, swelled to fad-like status in the middle decades of the 19th century. Sorry. Study of each leads to understanding of the other. Creation of both being a cultural phenomenon of significant proportions photo albums and, and quilts. Okay, album quilts seem to have been made up the coastal states and into Ohio, Tennessee, and Indiana at least. But while album quilts occurred broadly, it seems to be Baltimore album quilts, a rather loosely defined term, um, are distinguished by their particular attributes, beauty, and great numbers. Wow, look at this one, this is crazy. While the aesthetic characteristics of the genre, oh, I love this one, wow. Um, are the subject of the whole Baltimore Beauties series. 
That's Ellie's book, Baltimore Beauties. The question of why the genre was so astonishingly popular, and particularly so in the vicinity of Baltimore, Maryland, is the focus of this chapter. 20th century quilt scholars have enjoyed both counting and speculating upon possible album quilt themes. The hypothetical roll call of mid-19th century album quilts echoes like a syllabus from an American cultural history course. Legacy quilts, sampler quilts, freedom quilts, bride's quilts, tithing quilts, retirement quilts, presentation, qu presentation albums, friendship quilts, friendship medley album. Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. There's more. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, oh, wow. That's a really long list of different kinds of quilts. Okay. Um, numerous factors seem to account in combination mm -hmm. for the popularity of the album quilt at mid 19th century. I'm just going to read a little bit more you guys, cause it's, it's getting toward midnight and I'm going to have to, to go. It provided commercially a, a relatively recent technology was important. Okay. It had provided commercially available permanent non-fugitive India ink, a black pigment uh, of lamp black mixed with gelatinous substance, and color fast domestic turkey red and Victoria green cotton. Okay, so part of why these got so popular, it seems, or it's argue arguable, that you could actually, sorry, you could actually make them now. I mean, you could, you know, you could get that great red because you had the turkey red and you had the green, the color fast green. What's going on here? So that is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, exactly. No shortcuts. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, here's, this is a moment where I'm getting like, like I'm starting to like really read deeply and I don't want to ignore you and just like click around sort of as an afterthought. So here's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll put, put the link to the Baltimore um, book in, in the discord and I will do my homework because, because the thing is this, this, yes, this is my homework. And now that I have focused my energies toward getting that text and you, and the quilts for you, hang on. I don't want to go too far. Here's one more we're going to look at. And, uh, and I have this wonderful resource in the Baltimore art museum to look at the quilts, more of them. Um, then I will have my, I will have my, my homework, my study materials are ready. So Baltimore album quilts, th there'll be more to say about it. And I, I definitely, I definitely want to look at album quilts more Christmas. Cause like my answer for like what an album quilt was. And like, that was weak. That was weak sauce. That's how we grow as nerds. That's how I grow. Someone's like, what's an album quilt? And I'm like, well, mm -mm. it's great. It's great. You see where you're soft, you know, and you Get, get hard, <laughs> be hard, quilt nerds. So, um, so yeah. And the, 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 by the way, the, um, Smithsonian has a number of them, of these quilts, the Met, as we saw, um, who else? I mean, there, I feel like Baltimore album quilts are quilts that a lot of museums have some of even museums that don't have many quilts at all will have a Baltimore album quilt because it just looks like you should have one you know it's real fancy pants um to me it seems pretty fancy and and this one here this one's really great this one sorry I just have to click on it again and what we're gonna do to close out the show is I am going to I'm gonna show you the color names thing uh Padma but when I was looking through here you know what this, this, so they have 67 images of quilts and obviously these are cool. Look at this one. I love it. Um, very cool, crazy quilt there. So I definitely want to see more of these. Oh, is that true? Okay. Two major things just happened in the chat. One Christmas. I'm not a quilter, but 20 years in the tattoo industry gives me a great idea for an album quilt. Are you for real? Christmas. Christmas, this whole time, I was like, I mean, I just thought you were a card carrying member of the Quilt Nerd Society. Oh, oh, there should be a Quilt Nerd Society. There should be a Quilt Nerd Society. Ah. I'm leave that right there. That would be really fun. We could have little cards. Um, Chris, I, I had no idea. I thought you were, I thought you were one of us like already. 
You, 20 years in the tattoo industry, really? That is so great. Oh, 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 okay. I don't know if you're in the Discord yet. Okay, hold on, hold on. You see this? There are some moments that are post-it moments. Um, I am going to put in some pictures of, well, maybe we'll just talk about it on the, yeah, I'm not, I'm not putting in the Discord. I'm not, I'm not going to put in the Discord content that we do not talk about on this show. You need to come back because I have quilts to show you. I have tattoo things. Oh, I love that. Oh, this is great. Chris, I'm so glad. You've got, you've got some tattoo stuff coming at you soon because I bet several of you in the chat right now um, oh yeah, of course, I'll get a link to the Discord right now, so demented. Um, thank you for reminding me. But, uh, I mean, there's so much, I have so many things to show you, Chris. So, so I will get those things and we'll do a tattoo moment on this show. Because, oh man, I'm so glad you mentioned that. There is much for you to see. Much for you to see. Rules. Um, okay. How cool. You know what? We've said this before, y'all. You know, it's like, hey, you might not be a quilt nerd if you just found us by accident. You know, it could happen. And it ha it's happening. It's happening. Friends. Okay. Add friend. I need to get a link. No. Friend. Invite. Hmm. Hang on. Hang on. I want to invite someone. Usually it shows me the little, little thing. I want to. Oh, oh, I know what I have to do here. Invite people. Here is a link to the Discord. I still need to catch up on my Discord. It all... I just run out of time. Every time. What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, okay. Here. Discord invitation. ba -doom. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. New, quilt new quilters don't know, don't know what they're getting into, and it's this wonderful mess, right? Usually. Hopefully. If you've got a good teacher, it's just the best thing ever. So, um... Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Tattoos. Oh, I've got, I've got like quilts in my mind. I can't wait to show you. So, okay. So, so I'm going along. I'm going along. Here's where, here's where I'm going to end this show. I don't want to, but what am I going to do? If I start throwing tattoo quilts around, it's going to like, I don't know. It's going to be two in the morning and I'm not prepared. <laughs> Okay, lots of image not available. That's too bad. Lots of Baltimore album quilts. Wow, look at that one. Sorry, we have to click on that. That's that's special. Hmm. Yeah. Well. See, you see what I mean? Look, fr f makers, friends of Captain George W. Russell, attributed to Mary Simon. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Mary Simon Heidenroder. That was the same person that we looked at at the Met. That was her name, Mary Simon Heidenroder. I think they spelled it differently. But like that is some that is some provenance, you know. And it, I don't know. It's like kind of like you know these like rich white people. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, I don't don't get dizzy. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom because what I'm trying to get to is this. Look. So have you heard of the monument quilt? We'll look at it um, on another show. Look at that. That stud still. I didn't even notice that before. That we we looked at that picture, but that wasn't an exhibit. Okay, anyway, works. Okay, is this gonna take me to the top again? Oh, that's so annoying. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, the monument quilt. The monument quilt is. I have never looked into it much, but it's it's uh, yeah, upsetting rape culture. Uh, it's it's a it's a. Um, Social awareness, like the AIDS quilt, right? Uh, bringing awareness to um, the crime of sexual assault, of violence against women. Um, you know, this is a community project, national project, possibly, probably global project. Uh, the monument quilt, and and so we got to look at it. We got to look at it. Um, there's so many blocks, and they have just. I'm going to scroll down really fast again. Don't get dizzy. I'm so annoyed. That's a really annoying feature. Um, so, so we'll take a look at this. But they have a lot of the panels, which is very cool to know. So, yeah, very interesting. 
So Baltimore, uh, Baltimore Art Museum. Good job. You know, and, and look, look, and this, this is all we need to say about why quilts are interesting. We go from Baltimore album quilts, fancy ladies making their lovely, amazing, brilliant quilts, right? You know, in a very different time in America than, than we have today, you know? And it's like now we have women, you know, making... And not just women, but women making this quilt, you know, in protest, right? In protest, in this activist way, you know, their their grandmothers and great grandmothers and great great grandmothers, you know, were making Baltimore album quilts, maybe, or maybe not. But you know, look at the quilt. Look at the way a quilt is. You know, it changes. It changes with the times. It changes with the people, with the cultural, the waves. You know, and who's making the quilts depends, you know, the way they look depends on who's making them, at what time they're making them, what materials they're making them with. So, you know, you put a Baltimore album quilt up against a, oh yeah, Sean Kimber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You put a Baltimore album quilt up against a panel from the Monument quilt and tell me, you know, that it's not worth like having a show <laughs> about it, you know. Thank you for my, I knew there was something. It wasn't just the color thing. Yeah, look at that. Oh, shoot. You know, look at these two things together. Boom, 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 boom. So interesting. Okay. Sean Kimber, of course. So you remember Pamela Studd still. Um, and her tiny piecing. And now we go to a modern quilter who also employs tiny tiny piece and look at this oh you are so brilliant who said that did it was it padma or was it so demented i forget you're all brilliant oh tattoo flash art okay oh mm -hmm. sue knows hey sue i didn't see you slipping in here um okay okay flash flash art tattoo flash art oh yes Okay, this is one of Sean's most famous, it's a very famous quilt, also a very famous quilt in the American quilt canon. Um, this is uh, um, the one for Eric, Eric Gardner. Um, his, you know, famous last words of his life. Um, and that one, Best of Show at QuiltCon in 2016. 17? No, 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 no. Anyway, yeah, it's stunning. She and and so her Sean Kimber's quilts. There's Sean. Sean Kimber's quilts are often, not always, often um, quilts with political message. I don't know. I mean, Sean's spoken about this, right? Like, obviously. We need to talk about Sean Kimber. You know, it's like this show will never be over. Um, I mean, not this episode. It is also going long, but I mean, just the the show will be on a long time because there's so many people to to look at. Um, in essence, I am a sophisticated cotton picker. I think this is an early quilt of Sean's, but again, we'll look at her work and, and I'll get um, you know, some interviews and some writing that she's done about her quilts because I don't want to put some stuff on her. Um, Someone is using my sugar bowl and stealing the spoon. I haven't seen this one. This is interesting. Oh yeah, and I love, I mean her, I love what she does, you know, these little X's, right? Inside pieces, just great. A lot of text, obviously, right? We should look at quilts with text, text in them, a lot of them. Um, but you're right, I mean, it's so true about the stud still connection. I mean, it's so good with this tiny stuff. I am, I am still, I am not still, I am still not free. Yeah, I mean, her, 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 oh, this is really, this is really great. I mean, and, and the piecing is insane. And you know, something that Sean has talked about a lot and that has just been sort of in, in the water, in the, in the contemporary quilt world, you know, is the, the um you know the issue of race i mean i mean the there's a lot of white ladies who make quilts and they you know it has been a, a dominant a white dominated 
world, you know, for a long time. But it doesn't mean, I mean, obviously, like there's so many people of color who make quilts. It's part of the reason I love quilts is like everyone makes them. All of the people make them. Rich people, poor people, everybody. Race, color, creed, <clears throat> people make quilts, period. But like the publishing industry and the, you know, oh, sorry, the, um, you know, the shows and the paducas and the, you know, all this stuff. It's, it's, it's really, it's a white, you know, quilting so white, right? And it's caused a lot of problems and it's, it's just, it's, you know, a lot of people feel left out, you know, and iced out. And then you have the whole, you know, Baltimore album quilt, fancy stitches, tiny fancy stitches, white quilts, you know, perfectly done. People who can make those kinds of quilts have time on their hands. They have leisure time and they have the money to buy that new turkey red fabric and to buy the new green fabric. And so you have these intricate, you know, tiny stitches and stuff on certain quilts. And then at the same time, you have these marvelous, you know, improvisationally pieced quilts coming out of the South. It doesn't mean that those are black quilts and the others are white quilts, but it, it is true that like, the resources available to one group may not be available to another group, you know, but for a long time, the Baltimore album quilts, you know, were the pinnacle of quilt beauty, you know, and the other quilts just weren't even looked at, right? And so that kind of thing, you know, is definitely, like I said, like in the water and, you know, it's, it's America, man, it's so screwed up. So Sean has been vocal, you know, about some of the disparities and the you know, erasures and things um, that she has felt in the cool community. And I mean, it's, it, it's so important. I mean, I am so ignorant about this stuff, you know, I'm so ignorant about this stuff. And she's a voice that, you know, <laughs> that's needed. I mean, and, and I think, and I think sometimes, and I haven't talked to Sean about this directly, but I think sometimes she gets really tired of it, you know, <laughs> being this person who's like, speaking up for, you know, people who have felt, you know, dejected or, or looked over or passed over, you know, who have been passed over. I think it's, it's a burden that, you know, she just has it because she's, she's vocal about it. And I think it's probably really exhausting for her sometimes. And she's said as much. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's absolutely true woman of color over here. Love the quilting. Um, so Yovana says, just love quilting. Some of my extended family have told me that I have a white lady hobby. Interesting. Crazy. I usually tell them it's not a hobby. It's part of who I am, nor does it belong to one people, gender, color, etc. Amen. I mean, it's just the, the best way to say it is, is I didn't come up with this. This is, um, I don't know who's, I mean, Bob Shaw said this at the Shelburne Museum, whatever. It doesn't matter. Quilting is the, the democratic art. It is democratic. Everybody, everybody does it and everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. You can take a thing and stitch it together. You can, it doesn't take much. I mean, there are people who, you know, there are people who used to be able to make quilts whose arthritis is too bad and they can't. So I know that there are abilities needed to put a needle and thread and fabric together and not everybody has that. My point is, is that, you know, you don't have to make a Baltimore album quilt to be a quilter, you know, and you don't have to do improv piecing to be a quilter. You can make traditional quilts that are nine patches, you know, for the rest of your life and you're a quilt maker. And like, you can spend a lot of money to make a quilt and you don't have to spend much to make a quilt. And the quilts that, I mean, in every part of America, every inch of this place, there are quilts and they look different and they also don't look different at all, <laughs> depending on where you are. And yeah, 1000% Pamela Studstill and Sean Kimber are having a conversation, even if they have not met, I wish they would. Oh my God, how cool would that be? Maybe a quilt nerd can facilitate like conversations. You know, that reminds me, one of the coolest things, um, what was the exhibit called? God. Um, it was an art exhibit. Oh yeah, I remember. Lucia Prada, famous fashion designer, and Elsa Schiaparelli, I think I'm saying her name right, the famous fashion designer. The Costume Institute, I believe it was, did an exhibit called Impossible Conversations. And it was Lucia Prada and Schiaparelli. And 
and it was like they had so many similarities these two designers but they never met i mean chaparelli was was i think dead probably long before Muccia prado was even born but they they drew these parallels and had this wonderful exhibit and it was impossible conversations because these women weren't alive at the same time so that would be really cool right for quilt nerd impossible well possible conversations like to get stud still and sean kimber talking to each other could be very interesting you know how neat how neat um yeah 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 some of your extended family told you you have the white lady hobby that's really interesting it's really interesting i mean we talk about all kinds of quilts and all kinds of quilt makers and so far it's not been one kind of one kind of person when you know see like a quilt like this from sean super provocative you know so she in terms of her being in that conversation about race and about prejudice and privilege um you know she's she's put herself into uh a conversation you know she she, she does things that are uh provocative right um and like I'm glad I'm glad somebody is you know but I don't think I'd probably want to be that person for very long and I think you know she just makes really good work <laughs> that's that's the thing that I think is really the most important thing to keep in mind is she makes dope quilts yeah um I don't think I've ever met her I don't think so oh no I said that she was like I fangirled for a moment I think at QuiltCon that year yeah, I totally fangirl, but I I haven't like talked to her. This is a great quilt. God, brilliant. That's brilliant. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is great. God. Okay, we'll do a Sean. We'll do a Sean show. The Sean show. Um. Yeah, being in total control of yourself. Absolutely. That would be really cool. Yeah, for quilt folk too. It'd be really great um quilting hence my name quilting politic indeed being total control yeah i like that quilting politic yeah hi 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 okay wow well y'all this i mean poof what a good time i love our quilt nerd family too <laughs> we're so we're so you know what we're great we're great we we are fearless we just we go in there you know we gotta look at it and 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 baltimore album Sean Kimber, tattoos. Pamela said, so what more do you want? Okay, you all are great. This is, this is the last thing, I promise. The last thing. I do this thing, oh, this is great. So I do this thing, colornames.org. This is a, I made a YouTube video about it and uh, there's this website colornames.org and it's 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 um the creative commons.org people or something it's a, you know it's a non-profit organization and they're doing a project to name all the colors to name all the colors on the internet and what that means is so these are the colors on the internet okay it's it's the rgb color uh spectrum on the internet in print you have cmyk right cyan da, da, da. but in screen on the computer you have all these colors well usually look you know when you have a if you're a graphic designer or you do anything you know with html or whatever this color on the internet this green has a has a number and letter name that is its name okay yeah emotions right faith um well that's lame that it, every it ought to have an it ought to have a name. We name things as human beings. Everything has a name. There's there's peach pink and there's Amy, and so there's six million colors in the RGB spectrum, and we're naming them. <laughs> you can name you can name colors. This is what you do. Um, you got it. I mean, I'm I'm up late and I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it. What else do I have to do? <laughs> Sleep. So you can name, you can name a color, okay? So you can pick a color, let's pick that color and let's name it. So it looks like 2.7 million colors have been named so far, okay? So this one has gotten a name, Pinky Pig Panko. You can vote for that, that you think it's good. I actually think it's great. Remember, there's 6 million of these names. So like, isn't a name that's gonna just rock everybody's face off? Eh, maybe not, but is it good enough to leave it alone? It is. 
let's let's but let's just let's pick okay this one's unnamed this one's unnamed propose a new name um and i've named like thousands i think i've named have i named 2000 something i don't think it's 4000 yet I think it's 2000 something. I mean, when I'm bored or when I'm just like watching TV and I need to space out, I just name colors. Pepto-Bismol Pink. Now, that is a very good name, but check this out. I guarantee you, Bismol, it has been taken. Yeah, 17 other places, 17 other colors or 17 other people have used that shade so you have to you have to think to think harder 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 um so how about this sometimes i'll do this bismarck pink maybe that'll work hey that name is unique nice i'm gonna submit it boom it's too so we call it bismarck okay now name another and yeah i i mean you can really do this i love naming colors i mean i love it i don't want to do it well i don't want to do another pink hang on hang on Let's let's name something else. Oh, ooh, a dark, 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 dark. Let's see. Let's pick this. Has this been given a name? No. Name it. Oh, Isle Royal Ragwort. Well, all right. It's interesting. When I first started doing this, like two years ago, most of the colors I would pick did not have names. But now, you know, trash bag green. No, I don't like that. We're not voting for that. Okay, you guys, I gotta go. Unnamed. Okay, here's one. Here's one. Let's name this. This deep dark inky black Baltimore album quilt sashing green oh that's really good okay we're gonna do it we're gonna do it what about this one let's call this uh oh you know what I'm looking at my microphone Mike Black Mike Black is actually you know it's good yeah it's Mike Black look I could show you my mic it's good I think that's actually pretty pretty strong okay now let's just find Marianne is right we're gonna find Baltimore album quilt sashing green Let's see. Oh, that, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah? I mean, we could go by degrees and pick lots of different things. This is pretty good. It's pretty good. So how about this? How about sashing green? Whoops. Sashing green. Yes! No, we did not mean slashing. Sashing green. Sashing green. That's it. We did it. Everyone, what a wonderful time uh, that I've had with you. And um, it's good, just real good. I hope you all are safe. It is pretty late. I am tired. The links might be up tomorrow. We'll see, we'll see how far I get. But yeah, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a great one. See you soon, be well. Oh, oh, and there is not a, so a Sunday social tomorrow. Um, I was traveling, you know, I was in Budapest, got back. I gotta, I gotta have a Sunday. I gotta, I gotta chill. I gotta get my life together. So no, no, nothing tomorrow, but, um, but I'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> have a great night and, uh, yeah, be well y'all. Thank you so much for coming and tell a friend if you think you've got some quilt nerds in your midst, bring them along. Okay. Bye.